as you can see, this is one huge <laughs> So if you are squeamish, you might want to close your eyes and listen. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so now that you can see, this is what a huge bovine heart looks like. And you can actually see that it is tipped only to one side. This one was cut, it's only along the one side, so I'm going to show you just the one ventricle. And as you can see, it is huge. Now what I won't tell you to do is just to open that up for me there so I can show you something specific. You can see here inside the model, this is all of the uh, sinew that basically connects the valves to the muscle of the heart. And this is what I want to show you here. This is all one big valve that basically lets the blood in and out of this ventricle between the atria. And you can see these sinews are pretty thick. So you can imagine your own heart, it doesn't joke, yeah. my friends, those valves are strong. Now an interesting fact about your valves is that they are the reason your heart makes a specific sound when it pumps. Now you'll notice your heart has a sound that goes lub and one that goes dup. Exactly. Now the lub sound is actually your valves between your atria and your ventricles that are actually sealing and then opening up again. That's your lub sound. Now the dub sound is the valves running from the pulmonary artery and the aorta basically opening and closing and the blood rushing back out into the rest of your body. How cool is that? Now when you have a heart murmur, it's those valves that aren't opening and closing correctly. So I'm going to show you again. You've got little bits of sinew of valve. Now your valves are all tricuspid, which means that there are three sections of the valve that overlap one another. So it's a bit like a triangle. Okay. Now I want to show you this. This right here is the opening into the atria and this is your aorta. Now you can imagine a bovine, it is huge. It's actually quite freaky. The other thing I also want to mention is you can see the amount of muscle mass that is actually mm -hmm. present in the heart. But something a lot of people don't know is this little thing right here. As you can see there's like a tiny little membrane that surrounds your heart and it's called the pericardium. Your heart is actually encased in a little membrane and there's a layer of water in between that secures your heart so when it moves around it's actually got its own layer of protection and of course it's surrounded by fatty mass because obviously your uh, capillaries your blood vessels your arteries your veins that all come back to your heart they need to be protected how freaky is that now I'm sure you want to know where's the atria so I'm going to seal this up for you like this now that we've closed the ventricle, your atria is actually just this little section up top here. I think my finger only goes up to the knuckle, so it's only about that big. Your atria is actually disproportionately small to the rest of your heart. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine when you've got to fill your ventricle with so much blood that it needs to travel through the rest of your body, your ventricle needs to be big because it needs to use all this muscle to pump all of that blood back out into your body. Whereas your atria doesn't need to be that big because it's oxygen, it's blood without oxygen, sorry, mm -hmm. which is coming back into the heart. Now another creepy thing you might want to know is where does your heartbeat come from? Well basically if we close this up again, in your left atria there are two nodes. There's a sinoatrial node and there's an atrioventricle node and what that does is it's got all these little nerves that run all the way down to the bottom of your heart and mm -hmm. that's what causes your heartbeat. Well there you have it, your heartbeat, but if that queased you off you might want to take a look at this week's cool websites. Have a look.